has granted us a Savior, but those who have no sin have no need for a Savior. Therefore, let us confess our sins according to the words at the bottom of the front page of the service bulletin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended thee and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Who have the race be friends? 
knoweth his good will to man, and peace shall reign on earth again. Oh, thank him for his goodness. We praise, we worship thee, we trust and give thee thanks forever. O Father, that thy rule is just and wise and changes never. Thy boundless power for all things reigns. Done is whatever thy will ordains. Well, We beseech you, Almighty God, that the new birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free who are held in the old bondage under the yoke of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, now and forever. The Old Testament lesson appointed for reading on the Feast of the Nativity is recorded for us in the prophecy given through St. Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. You, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old from everlasting. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall abide, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Here ends the lesson.
this a lesson for this day is recorded for us in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. Brethren, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers flames of fire. But to the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain, and they will all grow old like a garment. Like a cloak, you will fold them up, and they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will not fail. Here ends the Holy Epistle. which is recorded for us in the Gospel according to St. John, beginning in chapter 1 at the first verse.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was he sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Here at the Holy Gospel.
Dear fellow redeemed by the blood of the spotless Lamb of God who was born all those years ago just that he might die for our sins. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Ever since the fall, people have been fighting. Peace, peace, they say. We even have the United Nations, the second great attempt to bring world peace in our day. There have been other attempts as this or that emperor has conquered vast territory and brought relative peace for a time. But the problem is that ever since the fall into sin, there has been conflict. Conflict with God where we have determined that we will decide what is reality. And that doesn't seem to be working real well for us all through the ages every time. Mankind decides it's going to decide what reality is. Things seem to go horribly long, wrong. And so there's been conflict with God who says, this is the world I created. This is the way it works. Work with me on this and it will be good. But our rejection has brought conflict with God. And because of that conflict with God and our self-centeredness, we have conflict with one another down to our day. And it shows up in our families and it shows up in world politics where we have war after war and because of greed and uh, power struggles, there are people in many areas of the world to this very day who do not have enough food. We speak of food security. But Jesus is the great reconciler. The angels proclaimed peace at his birth for a reason, because he is the one who has brought us back to God. He brings peace first and foremost with God. And then in spite of the reputation that it is given among the unbelievers, Christianity elevates people and brings peace among people over and over again when people are drawn away from their self-centeredness to look at the glory of God and his love for all people. And then that peace that we know with God, we carry to the world around us where we, we uniquely, are able to forgive where the rest of the world seeks only what it can get for the moment, only a little more power, only a little more control, only revenge. But because of the peace and reconciliation that Jesus has brought into this world, we as those first fruits are able to show that peace to the world around us. It seems oftentimes daunting and hopeless, but the peace that we have is real, and God gives us the joy and the privilege of sharing that peace that we know with God to the people around us, that there can be peace for them with God, that there can even be peace among peoples, indeed, peace among nations, because the great reconciler, the great prince of peace, has indeed been born into this world. Let us arise and sing glory to his holy name. Christ is born. The scriptures that we meditate on this morning on the gospel lesson that you have just heard, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Please be seated.
Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. In the gospel lesson, you heard something about being children of God. And interestingly enough, in John's gospel, as the scholars study it, and it talks about being born not of the will of man nor of the flesh, but born of God, you, you can come away asking, is this talking about Jesus or is this talking about you and me? And indeed, it's talking about both, isn't it? Jesus was not, not in any way, born by the will of sinful man. He couldn't be. This was the one who was promised seed of the virgin. And the will of man seeks his own desires and very short-sighted at that. And the will of man is against the will of God. That's been the problem from the beginning. We, too, are born of man to begin with because that's the way nature works, isn't it? And being children of sinful men, we ultimately, in a sense, are children of the devil. And we call attention to that in our baptisms, uh, depending on the particular ritual that is used in a particular congregation. But we observe it here, uh, or it's called the exflation, the, the child or even the adult is breathed on by the minister and the words, be gone thou unclean uh, spirit, give way to the Holy Spirit, is a reminder that in baptism we are transferred from the kingdom of the devil, from being under his influence and his control into the kingdom of heaven. In a sense, transferred from the left hand of Christ to his right hand, from the goats to his sheep. And it's not that every single human being that comes into the world is physically, bodily possessed by the devil and all of his actions are controlled by the devil. It does happen to people in some cases, even to our day. But every human being that is born in the world, being sinful and being a child of Adam, um, is under the rulership of the devil and needs to be transferred into the kingdom of heaven. And that's a reminder for us. And what do we read about the devil? He is, the, he is a liar from the beginning and indeed the father of lies. He convinced Eve to perceive reality different than reality actually is. And we're not a whole lot different than that in our day. In various ways, we want to see reality differently than it is. And there's an entire movement that's spreading like a disease in our world today that's quite obviously not dealing with both feet firmly planted in reality. But to a lesser degree, every time we try to justify our own sin, we are changing our perception of reality and pushing God away. We identify ourselves as children of the devil in that way, as we want to control reality according to the thoughts of our own minds. And God in his mercy would call us outside of that. But even being born of human beings puts us at odds with God. We are imperfect creatures, unholy creatures, because we are born of imperfect and unholy creatures. And our first birth then sets us at odds with God. But then came this one who was born of a virgin. That original sin that passed from father to children, father to children, generation after generation was stopped because this one was born of God, born of the Holy Spirit. And so the Blessed Virgin Mary was that singular one woman, it was even said to her, blessed are you among women, not as if that's somehow less than being blessed among men, but a woman who was created as the crowning achievement of creation. Here, this is the peak of it all. This is how God is going to come into the world. Here comes Mary. Women, 
the givers of life, holding within themselves that sacred gift from God to bring life into the world, to nurture it, to guard it and protect it. Among her, Mary is even more blessed than that. Why? Because she would be guardian, not just of the next human life that would come into the world, but the guardian of the one who is life itself. She would contain within her womb, as the hymns proclaim, even as our chief hymn proclaimed today, the one who is the creator of the world, creator of heaven. She would hold in her arms, in his fullness, that God who is beyond everything that we are able to see, who stands outside of that. Yet through her, through the will of God, would be born into this world. And she was so blessed that she could hold that God of hers in her arms and nurse him at her breast. Astonishing, astonishing the reality when we think about it. Yes, this one was not born of the will of man, of the desires of the flesh, but was truly born of God. This is the one who came and gave his baptism to the world, his rebirth, his birth from above, the one who himself underwent baptism to make it a holy thing, to place his power, his life-giving essence into that water of baptism so that you and I, born from above, born again by water and the Spirit, now are children not merely of sinful man, but children of God himself, brothers and sisters of that great King of Kings who was born of the Blessed Virgin and laid in a field trough all those years ago. That great essence of life came to us through a human woman to bring new birth as children of God to us. So the scriptures as you read them do not speak of you and of me as being sinful creatures, but speaks of us as saints, that is, as holy ones consistently. Read the letters in the New Testament that are addressed to the holy ones in this or that place, not to the sinners there, but to the holy ones. Because we who have received Christ have been given the power to become the children of God, repentant of our sins, born anew from above as children of our Heavenly Father, holy and acceptable in His sight because of that one born by the will of God so long ago. Amen. Please arise for the blessing. And now the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
O thou great and glorious Redeemer, who art wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, Lamb of God, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, King of kings and Lord of lords, Emmanuel, God with us. For thou art, thou only art holy, thou only art Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. But chiefly at this time, we adore thee for leaving the glory which thou hadst with the Father before the world began. We know thy grace, O Lord Jesus Christ, that though thou wast rich, yet for our sakes thou didst become poor, that we through thy poverty might be made rich. We beseech thee by the mystery of thy holy incarnation and nativity, good Lord, deliver us. Thou who didst come, that we might have life, and wast called Jesus, that thou mightest save thy people from their sins. Be gracious unto us and save us. And grant that we, being born again and made the children of God by adoption and grace, may, may, again, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit and follow the steps of thy most holy life, ever remembering that thou gavest thyself for us, to redeem us from all iniquity and to purify us unto thyself, a peculiar people zealous of good works. Let the glad tidings which we commemorate this day be made known to all people. May the root which hath sprung out of Jesse send forth branches on the right hand and on the left. And as at thy first coming thou didst send thy messengers to announce thine advent and to prepare thy way before thee, we beseech thee to grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight. We ask this of thee, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated.
together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
please arise.
Christ is born. Lord.